what an ass though. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Luke here and welcome back to a, another video. You join me today in my golf art here in London where I'm going to be bringing you guys uh, a video which I feel is going to be quite highly requested and that is five things which you should know when buying a golf art. Obviously I've had this car now for about three months. Uh, I went through a pretty vigorous um, and picky uh, buying process purely because I knew exactly what I wanted and I wasn't going to um, accept anything else um, and so I learned a lot on that kind of journey uh, a lot of tips which I thought I'd just pile together and share in a video because I know that a lot of fellow golf art owners or future golf art owners watch my videos um, so without further ado I'm gonna whack straight on into point number one and that is the keyless go now my car personally doesn't have the keyless go option fitted meaning I literally have a physical ignition barrel um, and that is the advantage. I mean, I know I've received a lot of comments saying, oh, you don't have keyless go. That's a bit kind of um, 18th century, isn't it? Um, oh, that's nice. Vanquish S. We like that. Hang on, I'm just going to have to manoeuvre a bit here. So, yeah, I'm in central London, so expect a lot of cool cars around. Um, but, yeah, the keyless go system on the Golf R is notoriously nickable, if that makes sense. Um, so, what's the best way to explain this? Um, so basically, the uh, keyless go system, you, you, you use the key obviously, but it's like, um, it recognises the keys there, and you actually have like a physical button inside. Uh, now basically, for anyone who wants to steal the car, or literally just hack into the systems and start it without using the key. So it's, it's pretty lethal really. Um, and so, if you can help it, don't fit it, or don't go for a car with that, because you don't want your car stolen. And obviously there are a few different things which you can do to prevent that, i.e. Uh, have a, a locked garage, um, or one of those big steering locks, um, which obviously makes it harder for someone to steal, or some sort of a mobiliser or something. Um, but I just thought I'd make you guys aware of that because, I mean, it's, it really is quite, uh, quite dangerous, really. Because the Keyless Go Golf R's are probably one of the most commonly stolen cars in the UK. I mean, just to give you guys an example, I'm part of multiple Golf R Owners Club groups online, and I see a post near enough every day saying, help, my Golf R's been stolen, please share this post. It's crazy, honestly, they are stolen so often, and for any of you guys watching this who have Golf R's, I just wanna make that point very clear to you because it's, it's very, very common at the moment. And I'm sure you'll agree that none of you want your cars stolen. So that is something to bear in mind if you are on the market. I mean, yes, um, to have keyless go, it is cooler, um, but just be wary of the fact that it can be stolen very easily. That sounded really nice for a McCann, or a McCann, however you say it. Uh, anyway, point number two, and is actually to do with the interior. Now on my car, I have the standard interior, uh, which is the half cloth, half Alcantara. Um, whereas you can actually get the upgrade interior, which is like a full leather with uh, white piping. Um, and personally, this is a little bit of personal opinion here, uh, I prefer the standard interior, um, which is obviously the one that I've got. Um, now there's a couple of reasons why I went for that instead of the full leather upgrade interior. The first of which is the price. Now, if you're buying a car new, um, the leather interior will set you back generally about £2,000. Um, and personally, I don't think that it really suits the car as well. Uh, the design of the piping, I think, is a bit a bit too, I don't know, it's just a bit too prominent, really. I like the, the subtle stitching, subtle white stitching. And the other reason is down to wear and tear. Now, Alcantara, um, it doesn't look like it's very strong, but it is. In fact, it's probably stronger than leather because you get it all creased and everything like that, especially with the bolsters on the seats on this. Um, they're quite prominent and you don't want to damage them, that's for sure. So yeah, obviously that is very much so down to personal opinion, but I thought I'd just give you kind of a, a pros and cons uh, for the different interior specs, especially if you're buying one new. Pre-owned, not so much because you don't pay an extra two grand just because it's got uh, the fancy interior. Uh, but generally I found, and speaking with other owners as well, um, the standard interior, the Alcantara and cloth interior is generally more popular. Small little detour chaps, I found a very loud M4. 
titanium tips and everything. <laughs> what an ass though. <laughs> Point number three is down to the gearbox, uh, which is either obviously a six-speed manual or a seven-speed DSG if you have the facelifted car. Um, now again, this is down to personal opinion, uh, I'll admit, but uh, I'm merely bringing up this point mainly down to resale. Uh, so DSG, as I'm sure you'd expect, is far more popular than manual. Um, so if you're in the position where you want to get good money for the car once you've finished enjoying it, um, then DSG um, will obviously get you more money. I, th I don't know exactly how much um, DSG and manual um, prices are at the moment respectively, but I do know that the DSG is much more desirable than the manual. Um, and also I think that the hot hatch, I mean, it kind of, dare I say it, it needs a DSG. Um, but again, that's just personal opinion, so don't rip me in the comments, please. Now, the penultimate point I'm going to raise in today's video um, is actually about the whole car itself and whether you should go for a Mark 7 or a Mark 7.5. The 7.5 being the facelifted car, which is what I have. Um, now, when I first started looking at Golf R's, I had my, my eyes pretty much set on going for a Mark 7. I'd be happy with that, um, and that would do me just fine. But when I kind of looked into the differences between the two, I kind of thought, Let's just save a little bit more and just go for the 7.5 because it's, it's got updated tech and it ultimately, when reselling the car, like what I mentioned in the previous point, you'll get more for it. Now, if you guys want to learn more about the entire differences with the two cars, the 7 and the 7.5, then I have made a video fairly recently where I got uh, both the 7 and the 7.5 together um, and pretty much sat there and discussed all the differences. Um, so yeah, if you want to go check that out, I'll leave it up in the top right hand corner um, as a little card now because that will hopefully give you a better idea about kind of what you want and whether you think that the 7.5 suits you better or whether you would just be fine with the 7. Now don't get me wrong the 7 is still a fantastic car. Now I did actually spend a little bit of time um, with a Mark 7 obviously when I was looking at the cars uh, and they're great I mean don't get me wrong they are different but they're still fantastic in the Mark 7 pre-facelifted form. So the fifth and final point actually leads on quite well from the previous point, and that is try to avoid buying a brand new car. Now this, I understand, is not unique to the Golf R at all. Pretty much any new car um, that you buy straight out of the out of a dealership or wherever, brand spanking you, spec it yourself, you will lose in the region, although it does, it does vary, but you will lose money in the first couple of years. Um, so that's something to bear in mind for sure. I mean, I bought my car with 7,000 on the clock, so it was nearly new. Um, it was a mix between an X-Demo and uh, a sales manager's car, so it was, it had some use, it wasn't brand new. Um, there we go, lovely parking sensors. Um, See, so yeah, it wasn't brand new, so I didn't lose as much money as what I would if I bought it brand new. Just for the record, I'm not actually sure how much this car was uh, list when it was specced up new, um, but as I explained in my running course video, I bought the car for 29950 Oh yeah, I know, just open your door, mate, why not? <laughs> Jesus. Now obviously, like I mentioned, um, that is the same with any new car. You'll lose a certain amount. Oh, hang on a minute. DBS Super Leggera. Yes, please. Look at that. Well, we'll have a bit of that, won't we? That's nice. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um, yeah, you'll lose money no matter what car you buy. Uh, brand new, you will lose money. That's a known thing in the car world. Um, I thought I'd just mention it because, um, I mean, that's all part of buying, buying a Golf R, I suppose, isn't it? Um, but anyway, I think that's going to round up today's video. A very simple format, I know, um, but it's one that I couldn't really not make. Uh, and I hope it's one that you find informative for any of you guys out there who are on the market for a Golf R. Um, believe me, mark my word, they are fantastic. I do not regret my purchase whatsoever. Uh, and if you guys want to see some more videos of the Golf R, then let me know down in the comments. But anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.